Come join me as I process a beauty headshot that I shot today into black and white using Lightroom. Hi guys and welcome back. So today I'm looking at some beauty headshots that I shot this afternoon, literally a few hours ago um, with the beautiful Izzy and uh, I'm definitely doing some big, bold, bright, amazing colours and some beautiful beauty edits um, with these shots. However, uh, I have decided that I want to do a striking black and white because Izzy's got the most amazing cheekbones, most amazing definition, um, beautiful jawline uh, and pouty lips. So I think that will look amazing in black and white and really push this image and make it look quite striking. Uh, as you can see, I've already, with the lighting, we've already had uh, butterfly lighting from above. Uh, we've posed her with her head down. We've got a very severe stare. Um, I've got some other ones that I absolutely love as well, which is not quite as severe. But I quite like the idea of those being a bit more beauty kind of shots. Um, and I like the idea of this particular one being quite a striking black and white, quite contrasty image, quite fashion. Um, I actually think with the beautiful stare that the blue is probably quite distracting. So uh, I shot this on my 120 macro lens, mil macro lens, uh, ISO 100, a hundredth of a second and at f5. I shot it on a medium format Pentax uh, and I wanted um, a lot of fall off with, I wanted the hair as you can see completely out of focus, I wanted a lot of uh, you like to be drawing you into the eyes. I wanted you to be really focused on her. So um, I feel like I was quite happy with my lighting. I gelled the background to get the blue and I quite like the contrast. Um, and it actually complemented the dress she was wearing. Not that you can tell in this shot, but it did. Um, so yeah, let's, let's crack on and have a look and see how much we can do in Lightroom. So the first thing I'm going to do is the obvious. I'm going to hit the black and white button here and you're going to see that it makes a huge difference already. We are noticing uh, the face area a lot more. Now I want the face to really pop. The problem I might have if I do something like raise my highlights or raise my exposure is that this area down here is going to contrast um, with it quite a lot and it's going to distract. It's going to pull our attention. So if I pull my highlights up on the face to where I like them, I like them about there, I want this to be quite a contrasty image. Um, it's not going to be blown out, but it's not going to be far away. I want it to be very bold, very, very bright and very contrasty. What I'm going to do to tone this down immediately is I'm going to use um, one of my masks. Now, I could use the brush and just brush this all in and do it that way but we've got some highlights in the hair as well and they're going to end up distracting if even if I tone this down we're then going to be drawn to these areas here so I'm actually going to use a linear gradient because that's going to cover all of this area and in fact I'm going to do quite a small fall off and just bring that up to there and I'm going to pull my highlights down in that section so you can see immediately it's just evening out if I put it all the way up you can see it's quite bright all the way down it's evening that out. This doesn't mean it's going to be the only darkening I do, but I think it's a good start just to tone that bit down a little bit. Um, and now, no matter what I do, that area is always going to be a little bit less than the face. So next thing I like to work on is I'm going to enhance the eyes a little bit. Now, uh, I can create a new mask and you know what? Let's do it. Let's do the select people. Um, it's found to nice and quick. And then we just need to get it to find all those bits. And then we're going to go iris and pupil and create mask. I usually actually prefer going in and brushing and drawing the eyes uh, specifically. But you know what, if they're there, let's let's use the masks. So on this one, I'm going to actually bring my highlights up a little bit um, and just open up uh, if I come in here and then enhance my contrast a tiny bit just to enhance these eyes to get a little bit more shimmer. I um, did use a reflector for a lot of the shoot, but because of the fan underneath, I couldn't add a reflector in. We've also tilted her head down, so we've darkened her eyes a little bit from that. So I, I want to just bring that back um, because she's got beautiful, glistening, bluey kind of grey eyes that are stunning. So I want to bring that back in because that, that is natural for her as well. It's not an unnatural, not an unnatural edit. So uh, I quite like that. I think that looks lovely. Uh, the other thing I might do is I might enhance the contrast on this side a little bit. It's a little bit 
less contrasty than it is on the other one. That I am going to do with a brush. I do like a brush. So I'm going to just bring that down um, and pull my shadows down a little bit and pull that exposure down a tiny bit more. And you can see it just defining that cheek, um, which I quite like. Now, now that I've got that, I can choose to do that. I always do it on a parting. Um, partings shine, they always do. So I just, I like to tone them down and I can do it just around the edge of the head. And if I choose to, I can bring it down and I can tone down here. Um, and we can actually make that face really, really glow. Now, I think that's a little bit too much, so I'm going to undo that. But I am going to use it on the hair. I think I can tone these bits of hair down a tiny bit more. There we go. I quite like that. So let's turn that on and off and have a look. I think that's really enhanced. Yeah, that's really pushed her forward a bit, which is absolutely lovely. Um, now, I'd also sometimes use a filter like this, a uh, mask like this, to enhance the nose. Uh, which actually works really, really well for her. Um, and just pulling that bit over there. It just adds a tiny bit of contour. The shadow's already there. That definition's already there. There's no difference to her nose shape. We're not changing anything drastic. It already exists. It's just adding that little bit more, more contrast. Um, so overall, I, I, I'm quite liking that. I still think this bit of hair is a little bit irritating. So let's add one more mask. Um, and I'm just going to come over that bit. And actually, I'm just going to tone it down with the exposure uh, and just bring it down to where the others are. Um, it's just going to be that little bit more annoying than others. There's always one. There's always one hair that catches uh, and distracts you that little bit more. I mean, if I just go to the before and the after here, we're really enhancing that image already. So moving down, we've got the black and white mix here. Don't really feel like I needed to play with that on this image. The lighting was where I wanted it. Everything looked quite nice. However, if I choose, I can play around with these, um, you know, bringing it right the way down on the oranges, right the way up. You can see what it's doing. Um, enhancing that orange is just going to push those natural highlights. But really, I could do all of that with highlights. Um, I can control the lips just here, uh, which I think, again, we're absolutely fine. The background is surely going to be affected. There we go, by the blue. So if I want to, again, add a bit of drama, I can pull that down a bit, which I quite like. I like that we're drawn to the face. But had I not played with any of that, I, you know, I'm not really too bothered. I think that looks quite nice. Um, the last thing I'm going to do is uh, you can add a vignette this way um, that just kind of brings it in. However, back to my trusty masks, I do prefer to do a radial gradient that just comes from the face like that and then invert it and do it that way because I just feel I can control the whole image a lot nicer than just doing a random shape that that kind of comes along I, I, I'm in control of exactly how feathered uh, you've got those settings down there as well but this just feels so much more controlled um, so I've ended up with five masks on that the last thing I do is I do like to play with my color grading I'm not a fan of pure black and white. I like things to have a little bit of oomph. Um, my favourites is either an orange tone or like a blue and a yellow. Uh, I'm feeling the gut instinct to go with the blue and the yellow on this image. So if I just pull my shadows into that deep blue, um, I like the deep blue. I like the tealy kind of blue. I'm, I'm feeling more teal possibly on this image. Uh, I'm just in a teal kind of mood. So that works. If I then go to my highlights, I'm going to pull them up towards the yellow. Um, that's a bit too green. So I'm going to pull it around this way a little bit. Uh, and I can play with the luminance if I want to. I can enhance on that, flatten that down and lift my shadows a tiny bit. Um, I quite like that. I think I might want, yeah, I like the warmer blue. The warmer blue is, is doing it for me now. Now that I've got that yellow contrasting, if you can see they're complete opposites of each other. Um, so they're nice complementary colours, which is, is going to work. You'll find that the balance changes. Uh, if you've got an image that's more shadow, more highlight, more midtones, you'll find a different balance. I don't use midtones when I'm colouring my black and whites. I kind of just like to do it um, as is. Uh, it, so I think it's just simple, but it, it, it's effective and it works. Um, but overall, I'm, I'm really happy with that. I, I think that looks lovely i don't think there's anything i want to do to it um let's have a look at the uh the before and uh let's have a look at the after completely done in lightroom 
nothing's touched Photoshop just yet. And I feel like we've got a really strong dynamic black and white there. I really like that. Uh, first image I've touched from this shoot. So there's probably a few more videos to come when I'm going through these. Maybe I'll uh, show you guys what I'm going to do in Photoshop as well. Although in reality, I don't think this is going to take me very long in Photoshop, this image. It's it's borderline there really, isn't it? I, I like it as is. Um, but yeah, thanks for joining us and I hope it was helpful.